Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is August 4th, 2010, and I am Darko. Again, welcome to this video um, where I'll be covering this one particular article. Just one article. Well, actually, I lie. <laughs> it's actually about two or three articles, but it's centered around this ridiculous article um, called Pledge to Give Away Half Gains Billionaire adherence. It's such a weird title. It doesn't almost doesn't even make sense to me. But if you read it, it's basically uh, billionaires promise to give ple or pledge half of their wealth to uh, philanthropy. And I think most of us know what philanthropy is. It's a keyword for eugenics or and, or and um, uh, creating a uh, a society that fits their little vision. So, with that said, I'm going to block, read, you know, just blitz through this uh, little article here, and I got some amazing information that if you haven't seen it already, it's going to blow your socks off. So, and you can see how ridiculous this article really is after I present all this information to you. Just stick with me. I'm going to read this article, and uh, you'll see what I mean. So it says more than, and this is from August 4th, 2010, more than three dozen billionaires, including well-known philanthropists like David Rockefeller and Mayor Michael Bloomberg of New York, and less familiar big donors like Lori Loki, founder of Business Wire, have promised at least half of their fortunes to charity, joining a program that Bill and Melinda Gates and Warren Buffett started in June to encourage other wealthy people to give and says, quote, during even the depression's worst years, my parents gave money, about 8% of their annual income of $2,200, Mr. Loki wrote in a letter posted on the website of the program, The Giving Pledge. I'm, quote, remembering, I remember saying to my mother that we can't afford that, but she said we have to share with others. I learned from that to share. And this is, of course, coming from a typical establishment paper, so you know it's a bunch of shit, right? Um... And then here, here we go. The pledge has been a matter of some debate in philanthrop philanthropic and non-profit circles, sorry about that, with some experts dismissing it as a publicity stunt and others predicting that it would produce a flood of new money to support non-profit groups. The program has predicted that it will draw $600 billion in philanthropy, or about twice the estimated total amount given by Americans last year. And it says, although in a telephone interview on Wednesday, with Mr. Buffett acknowledged that some of the money would have been donated anyways. Well, of course it would have, right? Because, uh, what, in 2008, we uh, donated uh, $600 billion in the bailout. And then uh, the stimulus was also uh, a nice little donation pledged by Americans um, for another almost trillion dollars. And according to this individual's own media site, Bloomberg, it's a total of over $23 trillion has been donated to the bankers, to these people, um, by the American taxpayer, by force, by gunpoint. So, don't let them fool you when they say that, oh, you know, the wealthy are helping out and they care so much about you while they're gobbling up other corporations and consolidating their power and exploiting this well, we call it a recovery, a recession. It's really a restructuring of the economy to fit their nice little fascist system. And he goes on here and he says about all its... It's not like it's half or all the money represented. It's added money, but some of it is added. I don't even know what that means. So if you know what it means, please leave a comment. He said the thought that the real value of the pledge was found in an example that it set in the sentiments expressed in a letter posted on the website. And uh, I'm going to not read the whole thing, but it says that uh, Mr. Buffett said the number of people who had agreed to sign on was at the high end of his expectations. He said some people who did not agree to sign the pledge were planning to give away most of their wealth but did not want to draw attention to those plans. Some went on a tirade about government and raising taxes, Mr. Buffett said, declining, of course, to name them. A few got into that, and there are some that have a dynastic attitude towards wealth, he said. Quote, that tends to be the case when they themselves inherited this money and maybe uh, feel some sort of intergenerational compact about it. And I mentioned in my last video, that's basically the people that these people work for. Uh, these people are elites, but they are not the elites elites. They are not the ruling families. They are not the 13 ruling families, the 200 ruling families, however many uh, um, 
There really are, but there's about 10 to 13 ruling families that rule the planet with their wealth that they've inherited, and that's the groups and names that he's talking about, and those are the people, his masters, that he's trying to praise. So he goes around and gives his money to philanthropy, which is eugenics and vaccinations, and like I said, all that stuff. So with that said, let's check out where this money came from that they're donating to killing us. Well, it uh, originally it comes from the Business Insider, and this is from July 15th, 2010. Um, 22 statistics that prove the middle class is being systematically wiped out by the existence in America. And if uh, you want to see it, here we go. It says 83% of all U.S. stocks are in the hands of 1% of the people. There you go. And that was according to 2001 U.S. dollars. Let's see there. Moving on, 61% of Americans always or usually live paycheck to paycheck, which was up from 49% in 2008 and 43% in 2007. And the next one, 66% of income growth between 2001 and 2007 went to the top 1% of all Americans. 66% of the income growth in the last six years went to 1%. 36% of Americans say that they don't contribute anything to retirement savings. A staggering 43% of Americans have less than 10000 saved up for retirement, which to me isn't a shock. 24% of American workers say they, they have postponed their planned retirement age in the past year. Over 1.4 million Americans filed for personal bankruptcy in 2009, which represented a 32% increase over 2008. Wow. One-third. Only the top 5% of the U.S. households have enough additional income to match the rising in housing costs since 1975. For the first time in U.S. history, banks own a greater share of residential housing net worth in the United States than all individual Americans put together. In 1950, the ratio of the average executive's paycheck to the average worker's paycheck was about 30 to 1. Since the, 2000, since the year 2000, that ratio has exploded to between 300 to 500 to 1. From 30 to 1 to about 400 to 1 since 1950. As of 2007, the bottom 80% of American households held about 7% of the liquid financial assets. The bottom 50% of income earners in the United States now collectively own less than 1% of the nation's wealth. Average Wall Street bonuses for 2009 were up 17% when compared with 2008. In the U.S., the average federal worker now earns 60% more than the average worker in the private sector. The top 1% of U.S. households own nearly twice as much as America's corporate wealth as they did just 15 years ago. In America today, the average time needed to find a job has risen to a record 35.2 weeks. More than 40% of Americans who actually are employed are now working in service jobs, which are often very low paying. This, is all, this all just uh, verifies and validates everything that I've said in my videos. Well, not everything, but... Um, everything that I've talked about as far as your standards of living being systematically lowered. You're working more for less. Longer for less. They're raising the retirement age. For the first time in U.S. history, more than 40 million Americans are on food stamps and U.S. Department of Ag projects or projects that the number will go up to 43 million Americans by 2011. This is the, um, what American workers now must compete against. In China, a garment worker makes approximately 86, an hour, 86 cents an hour. In Cambodia, a garment worker makes approximately 22 cents an hour. Despite the financial crisis, the number of millionaires in the U.S. rose a whopping 16% to 7.8 million in 2009. Approximately 21% of all children in the U.S. were living below the poverty line in 2010, the highest rate in 20 years. And the top 10% of Americans now earn around 50% of our national income. So there you go, folks. Being that they hold the majority of the world's wealth, uh, I don't think that they're going to be hurting after they give away half of it, right? Thank you.